Welcome to my first vegetable garden. Today I want to show you how you can set up a 4x4 raised bed. And I'll go over some points of why you might want a raised bed, but let me talk about this one. This is my community plot, and you can see the peppers back there are really lush, really green, and they're growing in basically a raised bed. They're growing in those black containers. We have a high water level here, so when it rains, maybe 10 inches, 12 inches down, stays really, really wet, and the plants in here are suffering. So you may want a raised bed if you don't have the best soil in your area. And if you frame this out in a 4x4, you're going to concentrate all the resources, the soil, the compost, the peat moss, whatever you put in there, right into a space and that saves you money. All the good stuff goes into a little area. If you have a low or well, actually it would be a high water level where the water just doesn't drain well out of the garden, that's going to hurt your plants in some, in some instances. You may want a raised bed. It also looks nice. When you frame it out, it's going to look, you know, just like the one right back there. You can mulch around it and really keep your garden looking nice around the, the um, raised bed. So again, we're going to frame this out, remove all these plants because they're just not doing well. And they've been in the ground as long as, as the plants over here in these containers. And you can see they just didn't thrive. So we're going to go to a raised bed. Now, the wood I use is pressure treated pine. It's pressure treated with copper. It's been like that for 15 years. A lot of myths are out there saying that if you use pressure treated wood, you're going to poison your garden. That is absolutely not true anymore. In the past, when they used arsenic, there may have been a chance of that, but they don't use arsenic anymore. And in fact, copper is a organic method for treating diseases in your garden. And if you use a copper powder on your plants just once or a copper spray, just once you're putting more copper into your garden than you're ever going to get out of the pressure treated wood. If you don't want to use pressure treated wood, you can use uh, cedar, you can use red oak, you can buy something different. But I like using pressure treated wood because it will last 10 years and it's not expensive. So these are two pieces of wood. They cost me about $8 each and I had them cut in half at Home Depot. They were uh, two by two by eight by eight. So they're eight inches tall, eight feet long, and I just asked them at Home Depot, cut them in half so you don't even need to cut. So you have four pieces. They were only $8 a board. And what you want to do is just pre-drill two or three holes right into the wood. You don't need to go all the way through. Just get it started. That's so that when you put in the screws, you don't split your wood. And then you're going to get, those are actually three inch deck screws. You want four inch deck screws. That's enough length so that you can put these together. I'm going to put these together, show you what it looks like. And then we'll talk about filling the raised bed. Put three screws right into the holes and that will secure your frame. And you set it up just like this, drop it into your four, four by four foot space. Now to fill this up, I have topsoil, which is inexpensive. That's like a dollar fifty, two dollars a bag. You're going to need four to six of those, depending on uh, how much soil or compost or things you have around the yard. I'm also going to put in one bag of uh, manure. Any kind of composted manure is fine. That's just to get the um, fertilizer, the low N, P, and K into the soil. And then I also buy, I think they're two cubic feet peat moss bales. They're about $12. That's about a half a bag. I put the peat moss in there because that will retain water. So I'm going to go pick up a couple more topsoil bags, fill this up, and that will be ready for planting you know, this weekend. And I'm also show you, I'll show you the plants that I bring into this space. And again, don't overstress with the quality, quantity, or types of soils you're putting in here. You can just mix it up. As long as it drains nicely, you're adding in some sort of compost, some sort of manure, or you're adding in organic fertilizer, your plants are good to grow. The whole purpose for this space, remember, is that the water would sit 10 to 12 inches down there and the plants weren't growing. So we're going to raise everything up and then we're going to put the plants back into here. Peat moss has some acidity to it, so you want to put in some pelleted lime. That will help neutralize any acidity that might be in there. It also provides calcium, which is great to help 
your tomatoes and peppers not get a disease called blossom end rot, which is related to calcium levels and watering, but you want to throw in some lime. And all I do is, you don't have to be perfect. A handful, one corner, handful, the other corner. So it's going to be about six handfuls or so. And that's enough lime to mix in with the peat moss so you don't worry about any pH level change. And next step is really we're going to mix this together, turn it over. I'm going to mulch the top with some wood chips and then I'll get to planting. Everything was mixed together and again I don't want you to overstress with what has to go in here. Nothing has to be perfect. So it's about six, six bags or so of topsoil that are like two bucks. A thing of manure that you can get at the store. I think that was on sale for three dollars. A uh, half bag of miracle Grow that was left in here. A couple things of container soil that's kind of old. The peat moss, the lime. And I just mixed it all together. This is what it looks like. I'm going to put a layer of mulch on there. And this is ready for planting for this year. Next year, when the plants come out, this will even be better. It will have a chance to break down, really mix together. And I'll just turn this over. That's one of the beauties of having a raised bed. Is that I can mulch all around it. And then come spring next year, I just go right to this spot. Turn over this space. The space that I put my energy into is a space where the plants are going to go. I actually wanted to show you the mulch. Mulch helps with two things. One, it'll keep weeds down. Actually, three things. It looks really nice too, so it, you know, it, it's not an eyesore. And it will also help keep the moisture in the soil. So once you water it, the sun's not going to come and evaporate it. And then again, that will conserve a resource for you. I was hoping to be able to do a sauce and salsa garden here, but it's a little bit late in the season, so there weren't any Roma tomatoes that really look good at the store. I'm going to use transplants that I started. That's a yellow pear back there, a bumblebee, cherry tomatoes, but they'll be fine for salsa, and that's a jalapeno. Before I get to planting those, I'll show you how to put them in the ground, use some organic fertilizer to set it up. You want to look at your raised bed, and right now it's 9 a.m., and you want to see how the sun tracks through the sky because you don't want to put your massive big plants right in the front and then they block the sun from the rest of your plants. You want to plan that the bigger plants are in the back, the smaller plants are in the front. And if you look at the dragonfly, you can see where the shadow is falling. So I know that my sun tracks this way over here at my community plot. So I don't want to put tomatoes all along here because it's going to block the plants back there. Now, before I get to those, right along here, and it's not really that exciting, so I'm not going to show you how I did it, just move the wood chips out, put some bunching onion seeds right in there. That bunching onion is for the onion flavor of your salsa, and you just mix them in about a quarter inch deep and let them grow up, and they only will get about this high. They're not going to block the plants back here. Along here, same thing. Remove the mulch, drop in cilantro seeds, let them grow. They do get tall. They're going to get over three feet tall. But they're pretty, um, pretty thin, so the light's going to come through, and it's not going to bother the peppers and the tomatoes back there. You can also drop in some basil if you want to. So that's how you would set up the seeds. Anytime you're dropping seeds, make sure you move the mulch off. Let the seeds come up, let them get to a height, and then you can bring the mulch back in later. So I hope that makes sense. Again, look for where the shadow is falling, because you don't want the shadow of the bigger plants blocking the sun from your other plants. Now remember I talked about conserving resources. That's one of the great things for a raised bed. You also want to keep it a 4x4 four four because most arms are two feet long and you can reach in from any side. You're not going to step in here. You're not going to com compact the soil down. I'm using a organic fertilizer of 546. I do recommend try to stay around the 555 fertilizer. If you go higher, that's okay. Don't stress out. But you just really don't need much more. To set up the soil, and again these are my transplants, I have videos to show you how to grow your own transplants if you want to do that, but again, it's a little late to start from seed now, so if you don't have transplants, see what you can find at the store. So one or two tablespoons is generally what's recommended in most packaged fertilizers, be they, be they, uh, yeah, be the fertilizers, be, <laughs> I'm going to keep this in there because I want to be able to say it. If it's a chemical processed fertilizer or an organic fertilizer, it's about one to two tablespoons. What you don't want to do is set your to tomato or your pepper right on top of the fertilizer. So mix in your two tablespoons really well. 
8, 10, 12 inches deep. And that's going to be plenty of fertilizer to get your plant started. This jalapeno has been growing in here a little bit long. Look how the roots are bound. So you can just break them up so they'll get growing in into the ground in different directions. We're going to plant it to about here. Get the dirt around it, press it in. And that's set up. Put the mulch back around and the jalapeno is in. Same thing for the tomato. We're also going to stake these up. Now the tomatoes I'm putting along this side because the sun is going to come this way. I also don't want them to block off the peppers that are back here. Just clear out the mulch. Dig a hole six, ten inches deep. We're going to go a little deeper with this and we're going to bury it to about here. So I'll remove this stem or that leaf and this leaf. One to two tablespoons, try and hang around the 555 fertilizer. Again, you don't want to set your plant right on the fertilizer, so mix it in nicely. These roots are a little bit wound up gently, break them up so they look like that. Dropping in a good chunk of the stem, press it in, put the mulch back, and you have your tomato set up. Now I'm not going to do that one on the video. The other thing you want to do is you're going to need at least a six foot pole. These are cherry tomatoes, so you'll prune them to manage the size, but they're going to get a good six feet. But get the posts in now before the roots spread out, this way you're not damaging any roots. And then the other pole would go right over here. I actually like putting this pole on the outside because this is just a tip. But when you're bringing a hose through your garden, sometimes it'll whip up and cut across your raised beds when you have something like this, and it'll damage plants. If you put bamboo poles on the corners, the hose is only going to go so far. So this is how I would set up this raised bed, it conserves resources, remember that everything goes right into the middle, helps with the water, pay attention to the shadow, you can see my hand so that your bigger plants don't shadow out your other plants, and then when you're fertilizing, just fertilize the planting holes, this way it'll save you money, and again conserve resources. Hope you enjoyed the video, please check out my blog at www.therosticgarden.blogspot.com, and also check out my YouTube videos, thanks.